Liam Coshgrave is a former Irish Fine Gael politician who served as Tower Sage and as leader of Fine Gael. He was a teacher to Dar La from 1943 to 1981. Born in Dublin, Coshgrave was the son of W. T. Coshgrave, the first president of the Executive Council and the newly formed Irish Free State. After qualifying as a barrister, he decided to embark on a political career. He was elected to Dáil Irian at the 1943 general election and sat in opposition alongside his father. The formation of the first inter-party government in 1948 saw Coshgrave become a parliamentary secretary to Tower Sage John A. Costello. He formally became a cabinet member in 1954 when he was appointed Minister for External Affairs. The highlight of his three-year tenure was Ireland's successful entry into the United Nations. In 1965 Coshgrave was the unanimous choice of his colleagues to succeed James Dillon as leader of Fine Gael. He lost the 1969 general election to the incumbent Jack Lynch, but won the 1973 general election and became Tower Sage in the Fine Gael Labour Party government. Early life, from an early age Liam Coshgrave displayed a keen interest in politics, discussing the topic with his father as a teenager before eventually joining Fine Gael at the age of 17 speaking at his first public meeting the same year. He was educated at Castelnock College, Dublin, and King's Inns. He studied law and was called to the Irish Bar in 1943. To the surprise of his family, Liam decided to seek election to Dáil Irian in the 1943 general election and was elected as a teacher to Dáil La for Dublin County at the age of 23. Sitting in the 11th Dáil alongside his father W. T. Coshgrave, who was one of the founders of the Irish Free State in the 1920s. Coshgrave rapidly rose through the ranks of Fine Gael, and was regarded as being by far the most able and active of Fine Gael's newer TDs. The party was, however, at an extremely low ebb in the 1940s, spending many years in opposition. Coshgrave wrote to the party leader, Richard Mulcahy, in May 1947, on the poor attendance in the Dáil, and informed his leader that I cannot any longer conscientiously ask the public to support the party as a party, and in the circumstances I do not propose to speak at meetings outside my constituency. Nevertheless, Coshgrave became the parliamentary secretary to the Tower Sage and Chief Whip when the party returned to power in 1948. Mulcahy, while remaining leader of Fine Gael, allowed John A. Costello to become Tower Sage of the inter-party government as the latter had wider appeal and acceptance. Political career equals Minister equals, the first coalition government collapsed in 1951. However, in 1954 a second inter-party government was formed. On this occasion Liam Coshgrave, at the age of 34, was given a cabinet position. As Minister for External Affairs Coshgrave took part in trade discussions and chaired the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe in 1955. He also presided over Ireland's admission to the United Nations in 1955. Coshgrave outlined the three principles of his foreign policy to the Dáil in June, 1956, the first was adherence to the principles of the UN Charter, the second was independence and non-alignment, but the third made clear where Ireland's sympathies lay, to do whatever we can as a member of the UN to preserve the Christian civilization of which we are a part and with that end and view to support whenever possible those powers principally responsible for the defense of the free world in their resistance to the spread of communist power and influence. Ireland was non-aligned in favor of the United States. The second inter-party government collapsed amid severely deflationary policies set by the patrician minister for finance, Gerard Sweetman, and Coshgrave held Sweetman personally responsible for Fine Gael's defeat in 1957, and told him so, reportedly stating that Fine Gael was no longer led by people living in big houses at the end of long avenues. He did not speak to Sweetman for some years. Equals opposition equals. Coshgrave remained active in opposition but he privately supported Fianna Fáil's referendum to abolish the system of proportional representation in June 1959, which was defeated. This opposition was to count against him later that year in the leadership contest. In October 1959, the dual leadership of Fine Gael, Mulcahy and Costello, stood down. Costello wanted to continue his practice as a senior counsel as well as being leader. 
he had asked Koshgrave to be his managing director in the Doyle while he was absent on legal work. Koshgrave, not surprisingly, had declined this. James Dillon and Koshgrave contested the leadership with Dillon decisively elected. With Fine Gael back in opposition during the 1960s, an internal struggle for the soul of the party was beginning. A large body of members called on Fine Gael to move decisively towards social democracy. A set of eight principles known as the Chess Society was put forward to the party leadership by Declan Costello, the son of John A. Costello, the former Tower Sage. The principles called for higher state spending in health and social welfare on top of a greater state role in the economy. Despite his conservative credentials, Koshgrave adopted a somewhat positive attitude to the Just Society document. Nevertheless, Fianna Fáil went on to win the 1965 general election and Fine Gael remained in opposition. Equals Fine Gael leader equals, in 1965. When James Dillon retired as Fine Gael leader after the 1965 general election loss, Liam Koshgrave, as a senior party figure and son of the first parliamentary leader of Fine Gael, easily won the leadership. He led his party to defeat in the 1969 election and was under constant threat and challenge by younger more social democratic elements represented by Garrett Fitzgerald who was elected to the 1969 Dáil. Koshgrave's erstwhile opponent, Declan Costello, had retired in 1969. Koshgrave's fortunes changed in 1970. He played a key role in the arms crisis, when, as leader of the opposition, he pressured then Fianna Fáil leader and Tower Sage, Jack Lynch, to take action against senior ministers who were involved in importing arms intended for the provisional IRA. The information had been leaked to him by the Garda Special Branch, who had already informed the Tower Sage. Koshgrave's determination to support government anti-terrorist legislation in votes in the Doyle, in the face of outright opposition from his party, almost cost him his leadership. The growing liberal wing in Fine Gael was opposing the government's stringent laws on civil liberty grounds. Koshgrave put the security of the state and its institutions first. At the Fine Gael RFHEIS in May 1972, Koshgrave faced down his political opponents in spectacular style. 1972 marked the 50th anniversary of the foundation of the Irish Free State and so was an important milestone in the history of Fine Gael. However, the FF government ignored the anniversary while Liberals in Fine Gael were plotting to remove Koshgrave as leader. In a speech littered with references to Fine Gael's founding fathers, he contrasted the difficulties posed by the IRA in Northern Ireland with those faced by the first free state government in dealing with the anti-treatyites. Departing from his script Koshgrave rounded on his leadership rivals. Asking delegates if they did any hunting Koshgrave declared that. Some of these commentators and critics are now like mongrel foxes. They are gone to ground but I'll dig them out, and the pack will chop them when they get them. Despite being criticized for taking a partialist, or unionist stance in his speech, Koshgrave was leading Fine Gael back into power a year later. Koshgrave supported the government's offenses against the state bill in November 1972, despite the position taken by Fine Gael to oppose the bill. Tower Sage, Koshgrave was determined not to alienate certain wings of his party in choosing his cabinet. The cabinet was described as being the government of all talents including such luminaries as future Tower Sage and writer Garrett Fitzgerald, former United Nations diplomat Connor Cruz O'Brien, television presenter and veterinary professor Justin Keating and others. Koshgrave balanced these with hardline Christian Democrats such as Richard Burke, a former teacher, Cork merchant Prince Peter Barry and West Dublin farmer Mark Clinton. It has been argued that Koshgrave fell into the category of being a chairman rather than a chief as far as the day-to-day -day running of his government was concerned. He was meticulous in adhering to the implementation of the 14-point plan on which the national coalition was elected. Many of his cabinet ministers were greater stars in their own right than he was. To the surprise of many, he appointed Richie Ryan rather than Garrett Fitzgerald as his minister for finance when the Labour Party leader, Brendan Kourish, declined the position in 1973. Ryan, a Dublin solicitor, was of typically conservative Fine Gael stock. Nevertheless, 
Ryan implemented the coalition's plans to replace death duties with a range of capital taxes, including capital gains tax and wealth tax. Fianna Fáil bitterly opposed these new capital taxes and garnered considerable support from the wealthy and propertied classes as a result that would stand them in good stead in future elections. The national coalition had a string of bad luck. It started with the world energy crisis triggered by the Yom Kippur War in October 1973, which caused inflationary problems. It suffered an early electoral defeat in the 1973 presidential election, when Fine Gael candidate Tom O'Higgins was defeated by the Fianna Fáil candidate, Erskine H. Childers, who became president of Ireland. Equals contraception equals, in December 1973, the Supreme Court declared the ban on the importation of contraceptives by married persons to be unconstitutional. Patrick Cooney, the Minister for Justice, introduced legislation in 1974 to regulate and allow for married couples to obtain contraceptives. Fianna Fáil opposed any liberalization of the law on family planning and fought the measure in the Dáil on grounds of protection of public morality and health. In line with his conservative credentials, and on a free vote, Koshgrave, without warning, crossed the floor to help defeat his own government's bill in the summer of 1974. Equals crashes with the presidency equals, the presidency dogged the national coalition. Erskine Childers had sought the presidency with promises of making the office more open and hands-on, in particular with plans to create a think tank within Erasmus which Terra in to develop an outline for Ireland's future. Koshgrave refused to allow it, and frustrated Childers' plans to break with the restrained precedent of his office. President Childers died suddenly in November 1974. The agreed replacement was Ker Paul Adar Lay, a former Attorney General of Ireland and Chief Justice. Adar Lay was a member of Fianna Fáil and had run unsuccessfully for election as a TD. Adar Lay was also a noted critic of the curtailment of free speech and was highly critical of the introduction of Section 31 of the Broadcasting Act, which forbade the broadcast of the voices of Sinn Féin copyright in members. This put him at odds with Koshgrave whose government had strengthened the act. Koshgrave, as such, maintained a marked distance from Arazan which tear in. Whereas previously, presidents had been briefed by Chorzaya once a month, Koshgrave briefed presidents Childers and Adar lay on average once every six months. In addition, Koshgrave frequently interfered in Adar lays constitutional role as the state's representative to foreign governments. He was not permitted to receive the Legion of Honor from France although former President Sean T. O'Kelly had previously received it, and Koshgrave attended the United States Bicentennial celebrations in 1976 in Adar Lay's place. Adar Lay's decision in 1976 to exercise his power to refer a bill to the Supreme Court to test its constitutionality brought him into more direct conflict with the national coalition. The government had introduced the Emergency Powers Bill following the assassination in July of the British ambassador to Ireland, Christopher Ewart Biggs, by the IRA. It had passed the Dáil on September 21. After consultation with the Council of State, Adar Lay referred the bill to the Supreme Court two days later. Although the court ruled that the bill was constitutional, and Adar Lay subsequently signed the bill into law on October 16, an IRA action in the same day in Mount Malik resulted in the death of a member of Garda Michael Clerkin. Koshgrave's government, already infuriated, blamed Adar Lay's delaying enactment of the bill for Clerkin's murder. On October 18 Minister for Defense Paddy Donegan attacked the president for sending the bill to the Supreme Court, calling him a thundering disgrace. Koshgrave called to inform the president of Donegan's speech, but refused to meet with him in person to discuss the matter owing to his dislike for Adar Lay, fueling the president's anger. He refused to receive Donegan when he came to personally apologize. When Koshgrave then refused to accept Donegan's resignation, this proved the last straw for Adar Lay, who resigned on October 22, 1976 to protect the dignity and independence of the presidency as an institution. Equals Northern Ireland equals Koshgrave's government signed the Sunningdale Agreement that appeared to provide a solution to the Northern Ireland problem in December 1973. 
a power-sharing executive was set up and a Council of Ireland was to be established but it all came crashing down in May 1974 as a consequence of the Ulster Workers' Council strike. In addition many Republican voters were angered by what they saw as Koshgrave's harsh line on the PIRA and the handling of the Dublin and Monaghan bombings which resulted in the perpetrators walking scot-free. Both the Irish Times and the Irish Press, which was then edited by Tim Pat Coogan, were extremely critical of the government's curtailment of freedom of speech and in particular of the Minister of Posts and Telegraphs Conor Cruz O'Brien which was used against the IRA. Tim Pat Coogan declared what he dubbed editorial war on the government after a, now notorious, interview between Bernard Nossiter of the Washington Post and O'Brien in August 1976 regarding the passage of the Emergency Powers Bill. During the course of the interview O'Brien stated that he would have liked the bill to be used against teachers who glorified Irish revolutionaries and against newspaper editors who published letters in support of Republicans. The coalition attempted to prosecute the Irish press for its coverage of the maltreatment of Republican prisoners by the Garda heavy gang, with the paper winning the case. Koshgrave was accused of taking an anti-Republican or pro-unionist line regarding Northern Ireland. Equals economic measures equals, the Koshgrave government's tough anti-terrorist laws alienated the public, as did its tough austerity measures. Marginal income tax rates came to 77% one year during the coalition's reign. The electorate had not experienced unemployment and hardship of this nature since the 50s and the government became quite unpopular. Combined with the Donegon affair and the hardline approach to law and order, the economic difficulties were quite damaging to Koshgrave and Coerish's popularity. Equals welfare measures equals, in the field of social security, a number of important reforms in welfare provision were introduced during Koshgrave's premiership. In 1974, sickness insurance, unemployment insurance, and occupational injuries coverage were extended to all employees, while earnings-related components were added to the basic flat rate sickness benefit, the basic flat rate short-term occupational injury benefit, and the basic flat rate unemployment benefit. That same year, Pension insurance was extended to all employees, and a means-tested allowance for the wives of prisoners was introduced. Equals Blowins 1977 election equals, in May 1977, Koshgrave addressed a euphoric fine gale ard feis on the eve of the general election. He made a strong attack on Blowins, who could blow out or blow up. This was taken to be an attack either on Cader Asmal, founder of the Irish anti-apartheid movement and the Irish Council for Civil Liberties, or on Bruce Arnold, the English-born political writer in the Irish independent newspaper who had been vociferously opposed to Koshgrave's policies particularly regarding the president and the wealth tax. While the fine gale grassroots loved it, the public were appalled. Koshgrave, together with James Tully, the Labour Minister for Local Government had redrawn the constituency boundaries to favour Fine Gael and Labour for the first time and they confidently expected the new boundaries would win for them. Dublin, apart from Don Lager, was divided into some 13 three-seat constituencies where Fine Gael and Labour were to take one seat each reducing Fianna Far Eel to a minority rump in the capital. The election campaign started without Koshgrave taking any opinion polls in advance a euro therefore not knowing that Fianna Far Eel were well ahead. During the campaign, the National Coalition made up some ground but the Fianna Far Eel manifesto of giveaway promises was far too attractive for the electorate and the National Coalition was heavily defeated, with Fianna Far Eel winning an unprecedented massive parliamentary majority. Fianna Far Eel won unexpected second seats in many Dublin constituencies, in particular. In the immediate aftermath, Liam Koshgrave resigned as Fine Gael leader. He was replaced by his former foreign minister, Garrett Fitzgerald. Koshgrave retired at the 1981 general election. Koshgrave can be accused of calling the 1977 election prematurely as the Irish economy was recovering rapidly in early 1977 and a later election in the autumn or winter of that year may have been more propitious for the national coalition. Post Tower Sage, in 1981, Koshgrave retired as Dáil deputy for Don Lager to be replaced by his son, Liam Jr. He has reduced his involvement in public life but he occasionally speaks in public for example in 2010, 
he made an appearance for the launch of The Reluctant Tower Sage, a book about former Tower Sage John A. Costello written by David McCullough. He receives annual pension payments of a $133,025 and currently lives in Knocklin. Family Liam's son Liam T. Koshgrave was also an Irish politician. Government The following government was led by Koshgrave, 14th Government of Ireland. See also, families in the O reactors. References